Hi, and welcome back to season six of the podcast. Can't quite believe it's season six. And um, yeah, just take a little moment to honor that and uh, and all the all the episodes that we've created and um, and all the guests that I've spoken to, all the thoughts that there have been, um, all the meandering uh, corridors of thought that we've traveled through over the last five seasons. And I'm really looking forward to sharing more of all of that with you as we move on into this new season and into this new year, of course. It is now January 2022 as I'm recording this. It's the 5th of January, in fact. And it feels really, um, really wonderful to be back Um and and I'm just very very grateful to to know that you're there listening and uh, and I hope you enjoy this next twenty minutes half an hour whatever it ends up being as we explore today's theme. So at the end of last year, um, at the end of season five, you'll have heard that there were a number of episodes all around this theme of decluttering and. They were largely, if not that surprisingly, inspired by the fact that we were moving house. And so it was something that was very, very present for me personally. And then and then today it struck me that another theme has emerged out of that. And it's all about how we create our space. So the subheading of today is what stops a space feeling like it belongs to us or that we belong to it. And and it's something that I've been exploring personally. And hopefully these reflections are of value for you too. So it's essential that we feel that we belong in a space, a space that we are, you know, regularly present within, physically uh, present within. And Maslow's hierarchy of needs actually places shelter as one of the core foundational needs. It's sitting right at the bottom of of that pyramid that he created, along with breathing. (laughs) That's a pretty fundamental core need. Um, Food, water, clothing and sleep. And um, I think if that doesn't show us the um, criticality of getting good sleep, I don't know what does. Um, But as we move up that hierarchy, then safety and security comes next. That's the next layer above those physiological needs. And then the layer above that is all about love and belonging. And for me, being in a physical space that enables us to feel our best, and, and in that I mean most like ourselves, truly, authentically, um, connectedly ourselves. I see that as being the foundational need to working well. And, uh, and, and by work, I don't necessarily mean the, the job that we do or the, uh, you know, the thing that we generate income from, but just working well, as in being able to inhabit our space well and uh, and do what we, whatever it is that we do within it in the best way that we can and and this this sense of um our physical space um being a, a foundational need really touches on all three of those three initial layers in maslow's hierarchy so it's part of this physiological need of of, of um, having shelter It's also part of safety and security, and it's part of love and belonging. And in a world where so many of us are home working right now, still, even um, 
you know, as we move through the kind of the ebb and flow of, of what happens with COVID, wherever we are in the world, you know, we will be, have been impacted by it. And for many of us, that has meant working from home. Um, and that experience for us might mean being perched at the edge of a kitchen table or sharing a room that actually uh, doubles up at night as a bedroom or or working you know in a space where perhaps we're used to working with lots of other people around us but suddenly we're working very independently and and on our own um and when lockdown um or as lockdown sort of continues to ease which i know we all hope that it does and and as um sort of things shift away from uh some of the things that we've had to experience over the past couple of years that will mean for many of us a return to office working so even if that's on an irregular basis um that will probably mean for the majority of us facing that common practice of hot desking so so having a you know, being in that space for so these two things, um, whether that's home working or or hot desking, can mean that the physical space that we're in um, either might have been disrupted or might continue incrementally to be disrupted. Um, and and that can mean that actually the way that we work or the way that we show up in that space can be perhaps negatively impacted and in fact according to some research in 2019 by Brickenden the vast majority and they they state 92% of office workers have experienced issues with hot desking with 80% of office workers reporting that office seating can have negatively affected their mental well-being. So it shows us how creating our own space, how having our own space as the place where we can do whatever it is that we do um, is deeply, deeply important. So the reason why this has resonated so uh, strongly with me is this whole house, the land uh, where we now live, I feel like I belong here. I feel deeply, irrevocably home. And and I, I even feel as though I've lived here before. I mean, it's so known to me and I feel so, so happy here, so contented here that it feels it feels like somewhere I have always lived except I finally realized during the break between sort of over kind of Christmas and New Year that something was getting in my way in terms of my relationship with this room where I now am so if you're um, watching this on YouTube you'll actually see I mean I'm in my my office um, and, and I noticed that I wasn't being drawn to come back into this room. Um, and there's a, partly the reason for that is that actually to get in here, I have to go outside through a workshop, up some stairs, through a really tiny hole in the door. And actually, I'm going to turn my camera so that, oh no, you can't see it. But anyway, down these little steps, you can just see the little rug, um, is a tiny door that's about half my height. And I have to crawl in on my hands and knees to get into this room. I kind of love it, but also it does, you know, add its own um, kind of little bit of a barrier to make it easy to come in and out. Um, but also, I just, uh, there was something else and I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know why. And um, in our last house, my office was my favourite room in the house. I would just find myself spending an awful lot of time in there. 
whether that was meditating or reading or journaling or working, I it was a place that I love to be, but not so here. And then having spent a few days away from here, I finally realized it was because I'd set the room up the same as the previous owners had had it. So they also used to work from home. And the moment I saw that was the moment that I realized I wasn't using the space in my own best way. So the line of sight from my desk didn't take me out of the window, but led me to a corner of the room. You know, it's it's a nice corner. It's, you know, it's a fine corner. But outside is definitely a preferable place to generate creative thought and and just to give the eye a a rest from the screen. Um, And and this this observation um, then led to me making some changes, which I'll, I'll come on to in a moment. Um, actually, and, and just as sort of an aside, actually, around that whole thing with the window, um, I'm not sure if you've ever noticed, but Victorian schools often have very, very high windows, and they're actually too high uh, for children to look out of. And it was believed that looking outside would be a distraction from the seriousness of the learning process. And of course, we now know the opposite is true. Like we need the outside world to inspire our creativity and our learning. And um, and that in turn really helps us work more effectively overall. So um, while those Victorians um, did know a few things clearly, um, that that sense that um, you know we're better off looking at a at a blank wall in order to focus more is simply not true. Um, so uh, just to sort of explore this a little bit a little bit more, I mean over the past couple of years, you know, as we've um, observed each other through the medium of teams or Zoom or Skype or whatever, Um, system you've used to connect with others I'm sure that you like me have seen many examples of people either sort of working from home or or using a, a, a sort of a computer at home in ways that aren't as conducive to their health or their happiness or kind of their easefulness as they could be Um, And so my reflection here is, so my reflection here is that sometimes we just need to think a little laterally or creatively um, in order to create a space that really works for us. Now, whether that is at home, if home working continues to be something that that you find yourself doing or you know having a a space at at home where you do whatever it is you do um or or if it's about hot desking and in in an office environment if that's you know what uh your experience um starts to be again um being able to uh, to observe the the ways in which we are inhabiting that space can help us um, see the unwritten rules that have somehow become lodged in our heads. So for me, it was how the desk should be positioned in this office. Um, and my reflection is, I, I think I put it where it was as a way of respecting the guys who lived here before. I didn't want to change too much about this house and and this place because I love this place exactly as it is. And so I think I just sort of had this kind of little rule in my head, well, that's where the desk goes in the office. Um, But of course, that's all subconscious. So, So seeing these subconscious stories we carry, they help us break the rules that we've created. And then that 
can help us make the space more our own. Um, and another thing that can get in the way here uh, could be that we're holding some sort of refrain, refrain <laughs> rather, around we're only going to be working like this for a bit. Now, you might have had that thought a couple of years ago, but still be working the same way now as you were when the very first lockdown happened. Um, or we might have a refrain around what's the point of making the effort? Um, it's fine as it is. I'm managing. Well, my sense is that if it's to do with your well-being and your well-working, then there's always a point. There's always value to observing and seeing what we can do to make things more easeful, to uh, create a more conducive environment for ourselves. And it's often the really tiny things that can make a huge difference as well. So, so how do we create a space that really belongs to us? Well, one of my reflections has been that we all have endless rituals in our lives. So the way you get up in the morning, the order of events around how you have your tea or coffee or hot lemon or whatever it is you have, um, whether or not you brush your teeth, before or after you get dressed everything can become ritualized and and I'm consciously using that word ritual because some of these things can go beyond habit um, because they can also start to hold meaning for us as well to to such an extent that we can feel really flustered if things happen differently to how they usually do um, in fact, there's a whole there's a whole other podcast. I, I actually did a podcast around habits, um, making and breaking habits. I think probably around about season two, if you're interested in that. Um, but one thing that we can do is to create ritual consciously, mindfully, in a way that helps us create the space around us that's most conducive to our well-being. So in my own office, sitting here now, alongside having to move things, uh, so I've moved my desk, so I'm now looking out of a window and uh, it's dark right now, but when it's light, I can see the blue tits rapidly emptying the bird feeder and I can hear the stream that runs along the edge of our garden um, and I can just see trees and, you know, sky um, I recognize that alongside doing that, I also needed to bring myself, my whole self fully into the room. And so I brought in some candles. I burnt some Palo Santo. I, um, I have a, a little a little pot of tiny crystals that my son's um, girlfriend bought me for my last birthday, and um, and I've taken those out of the pot and I've I've just popped them on the side there in front of the the candle. I have a room spray; it's a flower essences room spray, and I've sprayed that all around the room. It's all about creating a ritual to enable me to come more fully more consciously more mindfully into this room rather than simply opening that tiny little door crawling through it which is literally what I do and then sitting down at my desk switching on the computer and starting working and I only made these changes yesterday but the difference today has been extreme and I feel that now I'm much more present in here. I'm much happier in here. It feels like my space and I feel like I belong. 
So the question here is how is your space? So whether it's for work as in a, a job, job, or the place you do your thinking or simply the room or the corner of your home where you find yourself spending the majority of your time, the invitation is to look at that space with your most constructively critical eye. Does it need decluttering? Um, I did several uh, podcast episodes at the end of season five on that topic, as I mentioned. So, you know, if that's something that you need to do, then then some of those episodes might be useful for you. So, how, you know, does it need to be just cleared of stuff that's going to distract you and maybe replaced with things that you find really pleasing to the eye? Um, where are you facing? Like me, are you, face, are you facing to a corner or are you facing to a wall or are you looking out of a window? And, and what tiny adjustment could you make that would just slightly improve that? Um, even if you can't like physically move the desk, um, can you just adjust it a little bit? Another really great one is how does the room smell? Now, I know that might sound like quite a weird thing, but our uh, olfactory senses are really, really important to us and and very redolent of lots of memory and and can really, really change our mood. And it's something I'm very mindful of. As I mentioned, my office is currently above a workshop. And the previous owners kept a herd of 50 goats. Now, although those goats were never actually in the workshop, um, there is a kind of lingering sense of goat um, <laughs> just sort of <laughs> that occasionally appears in this room. So while the goats have gone, there's a memory of them that remains. And so actually burning the Palo Santo, um, which is a, a really delicious smelling wood, um, and, and just sort of wafting that around the room like a kind of incense really, really helps uh, change the experience of being in here. Um, another one is, what's the lighting like? Um, so how could you change it? So it's how you want it to be. So that it's, you're creating your space, at least while you're here. And, and if the lighting is really harsh, is there something that you could do just to to kind of soften it a little bit or to bring in some other light that just helps create a different tone. Um, and then of course, what ritual could you introduce? So today I lit incense and a candle, I burnt Palo Santo, and I set an intention about how I am in this space today. Um, and I also chose an essential oil roller just you know one that can go straight on the skin and put some on my wrists and neck just to have the scent of the of the essential oil and to you know allow it to absorb into my skin um to help create the feeling that I want to create while I'm working here today now of course there are always things that we can't control and most offices that I've worked in don't really appreciate it when you go around uh, wafting incense or lighting candles. Um, but things like being intentional about how we show up in the space um, or doing what an old colleague of mine started to do, which was carrying a mini shrine in a tiny little tin that she'd created. And she used to take it with her to work and she'd just pop it on the desk. Even when she was hot desking, it didn't matter. It's so tiny, she could move it in her handbag and she'd just pop it on a desk and it would just help her to ground herself wherever she was. So these things, they're available to all of us. And ultimately, I think, I think this is really about consciously inhabiting our space. So really seeing it, making small changes where we can, and then choosing how we show up 
within that space. So being intentional with how we are within the space. That's what really helps us feel like we belong somewhere. So thank you again for listening. And, and I'd love to hear what thoughts have arisen for you. Is there a little corner of your house that you can um, create as your own? And I've talked before about the importance of having um, our own little corner um, of our home that really does belong to us. It's, I mean, I call mine my shrine. You can call it whatever you like, but somewhere where you have things that are really special to you. And so when you see it, when you connect with it and interact with it, um, it feels really um, present and powerful and personal to you. Um, And in in a way, what I've been talking about today is about extending that space, that little corner into something that energetically feels as though it's filling the whole space that we're within. And actually, those uh, sprays, the room sprays that I was talking about, even that is something that um, you can really take into an office environment as well. You just spray it over yourself. Um, Flower essences are just such beautiful things. They're so delicate. There's no chemicals within them they don't stain the furniture or your clothing um and they can just form part of that that kind of ritual of like "Mm, i'm here and in the same way using essential oils on our skin can do exactly the same thing so what is the ritual that you can create and and i'd love to know sort of how this resonates with you and It feels like it could be part of um, starting the year as we mean to go on, which was a lovely message I received from a client today who um, contacted me and said, I don't think I've set my session for starting the year as we mean to go on yet, which we now have done. Um, And perhaps this is just this whole sort of topic today is really about committing to ourselves to create the space where we can start the year as we mean to go on okay my darlings so gorgeous to be back and to be talking with you and I cannot wait to share more of the plans for Batchbrook Farm our new home and the wonderful things that we're planning here Um, this space is so beautiful and um, it's a place to share and hopefully you can be part of that too okay my darlings take care be safe and I send you a hug and a wave